Hi everyone and welcome to And So On. My name is Lisa and I'm coming to you today from a beautiful autumn day here in Toronto, Canada. It is absolutely gorgeous. I'll see if I can get some pictures of the foliage outside my window so that you guys can see how lovely it is. It is getting chilly though. I have to say we had a very mild autumn and we were so spoiled and now it's getting cold and it's getting cold quick. But uh, so I'm sitting here with, I literally have like two different big woolly socks on and I have um, some knitting like up against my knees to warm me up as I'm sitting here. That's how chilly I am. Anyway, I'm here today to tell you about my October makes and a couple of them you've already seen in my previous toaster sweater times three video. So you can have a look over there for a little bit more detailed on those. But other than that, I'm going to get to it and show you the things that I made. So first off, what I'm wearing is the Lisa Lynn Co. Gallery Tunic and I'm going to put a video up here of me wearing this. So you saw me get this uh, in my fabric haul at Fabricland a little while ago and I love this pattern. I've made it in three different lengths. I've made it the dress length, I've made it the tunic length, and then for this I made it shirt length. So all I did was I took the tunic length and I shortened it by two inches and I literally just folded it up and shortened it so that it would be a little more shirt length and, and I thought that was a little bit more appropriate for the season. So I, I worked really hard to get these, um, you know, to get the seam matching here. I did a pretty good job on this seam and I also did a pretty good job on the underarm seam. You know, it's not it's not perfect, perfect, but it's pretty good. Oh, that's not so good there. But this is pretty good. I'm feeling pretty good about it. Um, God, you know what? Every time I think about pattern matching, I get so irritated only because the number of times I see a garment, someone in a garment, not just the garment walking down the street, someone in a garment walking down the street, and there is no pattern matching. Like, who in a store goes in the store and goes, oh, that plaid is off. I can't buy that now. So is yes, but regular people, no. So that's the other reason why I like this pattern. So there's no, for this pattern, there's no button placket. It's, it's just, you know, it's very simple, especially for a first shirt. See, I have some nice cuffs here. I haven't done the poppers yet. I'll do those at some point. I don't really care to be totally honest, but I will probably do them at some point. Um, and I put uh, a little t-shirt under it today to be a little bit warmer. And the other thing I did is, um, so the actual thing comes down to here but I found you could see my bra strap. So I just stitched across at the level that made me comfortable and uh, and you can't tell. So like that's the other thing, right? So if someone goes to a store and they look at a shirt, they don't go, oh, well, does that have a button placket or is it a popover or whatever? Like they just go, I like that fabric, I like that shape and they buy the shirt. Whereas for us, we, you know, as sewists, we look at the pattern, we're really analyzing. And for me, like, I don't need to do a full button placket to feel like I've really done a shirt. And um, this, I think, is such a great pattern. And it's so, you know, you can use it for so many different things. I highly recommend it. So there you go. That's my that's my uh, getting on the soapbox about, <laughs> about ready to wear and shirts and plackets. And yes, that's all of it. Okay, so next is actually... Um, was not very successful, but that's okay. That's part of learning. I'm okay with that. It was my new look 6519 and it was, if you'll remember, it was this top and it had these, um, these ties and it just doesn't look very good on me at all. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think I wonder if part of it is that there's no pictures on the pattern. It's just an illustration. And maybe I liked the idea of the illustration more than it actually looks as a garment. It just looks a little bit, I don't know, hobby, hobby sewing kind of. I don't even know what I mean by that. But you know, like just, it doesn't feel like a professional garment. It doesn't feel like a real piece of clothing. It feels like I'm trying to like, trying to sew something with, with cotton and it's just not, it's just not working. So you know, I, I worked on it and I actually did some really nice, um, I did some really nice red finishing Hong Kong um, seams here on the inside. I really wanted this garment to, to work, but it really doesn't. I'm not even going to show it to you, Mon, because I didn't, and I didn't even finish the bottom. Um, but I can salvage this fabric. I can make a boxy t-shirt out of it or I can make a pair of, of um, like Pearl Soho 
um, city break shorts or city 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 gym shorts. I don't know if you've seen that that pattern. I really love that pattern. So yeah, so this was a no, but that's okay. That's okay. That happens. Okay. Next were the three toaster sweaters that I showed you in my toaster times three. There were two version ones and a version three. And if I'm going to try and get them up there, but if I don't, then just head over to that video. I made one in the pink Ponty, which is lovely. And I wore that a lot when it was still very transitional weather. It's not super warm, so I'm not sure how much I'll wear it this winter. Um, and then there was the um, the one that I made as a muslin for version one, and I made that out of the um, thrifted sweatshirt. That turned out great. It's a little on the short side, and I actually, as a muslin, I think I'll probably, my daughter might wear it a little bit more than me. My daughter can wear my clothes. Let's just take a moment. My 11-year-old is wearing my clothes. That's okay, move on. Um, yeah, so I can use that sweatshirt here and there, but the gray scuba is the bomb. That's my very favorite. It might, it's probably my, my most favorite make after my, my jumpsuit. Um, it is cozy. It is warm. I, I'm going to search out if anyone knows where to get Jersey, double Jersey scuba, let me know. Cause I got it at that shop that I went to in Maryland and that they're, I don't think they're online. So, um, yeah, if anyone, especially in Canada, where you have the jersey on both sides. Oh, it is just so soft and cozy. So I love it. So I finished those right at the beginning of the month. And then at the end of the month, I finished my last toaster. Yep, four toasters one month, <laughs> two of each version. And that is this one here. So if you remember, I had that faux stretch suede. This is heaven it is so cozy so comfortable I was worried that the other side of this that this fabric here would feel kind of polyestery and mm, against my skin it doesn't it's super comfortable although I would probably just as well wear it with like a long sleeve t-shirt underneath um, but if I could explain to you just how soft and buttery and drapey this is I did lengthen the body by two inches oops there's a little mark there is that just the Oh yeah. I did lengthen the body by two inches. Oh, I hope that's not a mark. And that was really, um, because as we know, that slit goes up on the side quite a bit on the toaster. And for winter, I didn't want that. So I, I just lengthened it a little bit. It sewed up really great. Um, and yeah, really, really comfortable. So I'm very happy with that. And I've got a video of me wearing this lovely toaster. Um, and I wish I actually made something else that you'll see next with this same fabric, <laughs> but they don't go together. I tried to wear them together, like, no, doesn't work, doesn't work. But certainly um, this fabric I would love to get again. I did go to Fabricland today and I kind of checked out to see if I could find another color because I'd love to do a dress in this fabric and just, you know, cozy up with it. But um, the, pr the price had gone back up. I got this on sale and it was back up to $22 a meter. I'm not paying $22 a meter, but it'll go down again. That's Fabricland, it'll go down. And then let's see, also in this fabric, actually, you know what, I'll do this one first. This was my other sort of meh make. It's not 100%. It's also not 100% done, so that's fine. But if you remember that black, uh, that pair of black stretch denim um, pants that I had thrifted, and I was going to do uh, Maker's Atelier cigarette pants with them, but it wasn't enough fabric. I couldn't make it work. So I have some Ponty that I'm going to use for that. But um, I decided to do, uh, it's Simplicity, hmm, I think it's 8578, it's below. It came with Love to Sew magazine, but the problem was is I didn't realize it's actually too big for me. I'm at least one size down and really probably two sizes down. So I just tried to like, you know, tried to cut it in a way that um, made it smaller. Um, so this is what I have so far. And it looks pretty good just here. I did do some really pretty art gallery, uh, art gallery fabric butterflies on the inside there of the pockets. And that was kind of fun. Yeah, I like that. And I like the waistband. Um, I do need to add a zipper to it. And some of the, like you can see some of the seams are off. And I think that's just because when I was trying to make it smaller, I somehow got something off um, and the length right now is mid calf I want to love that midi length I, I really really do 
when I try it on though, it just doesn't suit me. It just looks really dowdy on me. So I'm going to try this. I'm going to add in the zipper, see what happens. Because it is a great length too for winter, right? Because it keeps, keeps you warmer. But I just don't know that it's flattering on me. I think I either need long or like just below the knee or just above the knee. But that mid-calf level, even though it's super trendy and I think it looks fantastic in photos, I don't think it really suits me. But we'll see. When I get this done, I'll try it on. and Maybe I'll post photos on my Instagram. If you want to come over and follow me on Instagram, I try and post my makes there as well. Okay, last but not least, I think is one of my favorites for this month. And this is my By Hand London Ursula wrap skirt. Also done in this faux suede. And I did do the scalloped front. Um, and I also top stitched down. Let's see if I can show you top stitch down on either side of the side seams and I did that because you can't iron this fabric it just you, it iron it goes whatever iron me I'm not I'm not changing anything I'm good <laughs> so I had to top stitch down either side just to get it to lay flat but by doing that it does lay flat which is great and you don't have to finish the seams with the um with this knit so that's great being that it's in that stretch suede, it really hugs you, which is nice. It's really cozy to wear. I think I need to size down on this pattern again. I tried to size down a bit without printing it off again and re-putting it together. And it wasn't. It, it, so now the back doesn't do that nice crossover that it's supposed to do. It It's sort of a little bit to the side. Um, but still, I'm really happy with this. It's very, very cozy. Um, I also had to... Um, top stitch around the oh that's not pretty oh well there you go something that's not pretty gosh there you go not pretty <laughs> if anyone is noticing the overlap stitching on the belt of my wrap skirt then I need to improve my vocabulary and become a better conversationalist because you should, you should not be noticing that um, but anyway I have to say it is absolutely a, a gorgeous skirt really comfortable I can see wearing it all week all winter over a pair of leggings with boots um, in the in the video that you'll see I wore it with um, a cream cashmere sweater that I thrifted for two dollars do you guys want to come thrifting with me sometime maybe I'll take you guys thrifting with me because I love I my, my fingers feel the cashmere friends I just I go like this and my, I go cashmere cashmere I just feel the cashmere I love cashmere but I can't buy it <clears throat> can't buy it retail way way too expensive and there's so many beautiful cashmere sweaters um, that you can get at at thrift stores uh, sometimes they have holes but often they don't and here's a secret I actually sleep in cashmere in the winter which sounds so decadent and ridiculous but when you're getting them for five or ten dollars it really isn't and cashmere breathes really well so whereas if I wore a wool sweater to bed sometimes I'd get too hot in the middle of the night or whatever cashmere just makes me feel perfectly the most comfortable temperature I never get too hot I'm never too cold I can layer it yeah I'm a big fan of the cashmere anyway that's just a little aside <laughs> Um, I also want to let you guys know before we go that we just hit 500 subscribers. As a matter of fact, 505 to be exact. So thank you so much. Thank you for welcoming me, welcoming me to this YouTube community. Um, we are at not quite one month and I do have a plan of something to do for the one month, one month anniversary, um, which is coming up in two days. But um, thank you so much for supporting me and for encouraging me. I've got so many lovely comments from people and I really, really appreciate it. And I've also got a lot of comments that it's nice to see Cana extra Canadian Canadian YouTube vloggers so yay yay Canada yay um, if you wouldn't mind I would love it if you would give this video a thumbs up if you would let me know below what you thought of my makes and please do subscribe I have videos coming up so far I'm doing twice a week once twice a week I'm gonna see how things kind of settle up and then once I've gotten to a rhythm I'm gonna set it and be a lot more um, a lot more strict about it but for the moment I'm saying once or twice a week and yeah thanks so much I really appreciate it I will see you soon bye bye